Hey there, welcome to The Uplift. We got a great show for you, a great cast of characters as well. Among them, these a fitness instructor combining boxing with drumming to help patients battling a big time disease. Also, a woman who calls herself a bad weather friend. Why would that be? David Begno will explain. Also, remember the official mascot of the Boston Marathon who supported racers for decades? How they're honoring him now. He's a good boy. That's coming up. Plus, two Minnesota kids who haven't given up on cursive handwriting. In fact, they've made script their sport. If you follow that, all that more coming up. It's going to be heartwarming news. You're watching The Uplift. Hey there, I'm Tony DeCopel, and this is The Uplift. It's a show that lifts you up for at least the next 30 minutes. You, and I like to say me as well. And we're going to begin with a workout class that combines drumming and boxing to help people battle a very difficult disease. CBS Los Angeles' Elise Martinez has more. Drums, music, and beats reverberate inside this drum boxing class in Malibu. It may be loud, but the whole point is to get into a flow state. I was really inspired to, to bring this to the world. It's meditation and exercise at the same time. Drum boxing is the brainchild of former pro volleyball player Christina Hines and percussionist John Wakefield. They say it trains the brain and the body equally. Students are challenged to combine boxing movements with drumming sequences. The connection with rhythm, tying it in with motor skills, really training the brain like you train the body, putting it in a situation where it has to react. The rhythm and combinations are constantly changing and you must adapt. It's a lot like life. And no one knows more about getting knocked down than Jonathan Cole. He's been battling Parkinson's for more than 10 years. There's not much you can do about it other than fight it. And if you fight and you, and you quit, then you're gonna be not get, you're not gonna make it. You're literally fighting it, right? Yep, we're literally fighting it. His tremor's less noticeable as he beats the drums and punches the bat. Four, one, five, three. Cole is a believer that drum boxing and exercise are helping him slow the progression of the disease. While there are no studies on drum boxing right now, the class has piqued the interest of neuroscientists and researchers. So hopefully we'll be able to get some data over the next few months and years and really see what's going on in the brain. Cole says he wants other people living with Parkinson's to keep fighting. It's, um, there's nothing to be ashamed of. You come in here and you, and you do what you can do. And as you do it, you'll uh, get better. And to hit back at the fear. One, two, three, four, five. All right, fantastic. In Malibu, Elise Martinez, KCAL News. Coming up, do you remember how to write in cursive? For many, it's old fashioned, but at one school in Minnesota, script has become a sport. Plus, we explore the timeless world of Western fashion, the Wild West. Stick around. Music fans began prepping for the release of Beyonce's new country album, Cowboy Carter, by getting into their Western Wild West wardrobes. The superstar may have ignited some interest in cowboy hats and boots, is what I'm saying, but the style, it's been timeless for decades. Nicole Nielsen from CBS Texas has more on the roots of that kind of country culture. Trends may come and go. A classic pair of boots can take you absolutely anywhere. But the staples of Western fashion have stayed timeless over the years. A trusty pair of boots, jeans, and a good old-fashioned cowboy hat. It's the few items that, no matter the decade, you'll see gracing the CMT Music Awards red carpet alongside designer gowns and suits. I really love the red ones with the state of Texas on them. I think that those are a perfect statement piece. I would wear those myself. Maggie Terry is a fashion enthusiast and works at the National Cowgirl Museum and Hall of Fame in Fort Worth. She says Western fashion has seemingly transcended time because of its deep roots in American culture. I think there's a little bit of nostalgia that goes with the Western industry. With many country artists originating from small rural parts of the country, growing up on ranches or in farming communities, they've continued to show their pride for their hometowns with what they wear. And so while you won't see an outfit like this one on the red carpet, there are aspects like the fringe 
but never go out of style. And texture and shape. The timeless western wear pieces are often as different in their style as they are in their owner. Like Lainey Wilson, who has found her way modernizing bell bottoms as her signature look. She has been a big part in bringing back the bell bottom trend and really making it her own. Terry says she wouldn't be surprised to see those back on the red carpet this year, along with darker and moodier looks inspired by celebrities like Beyonce and Bella Hadid, who have recently embraced Western wear. The Johnny Cash man in black trend is very big right now. It was very big at national finals rodeo this past year, and I'm very interested in seeing some of that in on the red carpet this year. So for now, we'll wait and see. InfoWorth Nicole Nielsen, CBS News, Texas. Many students across these United States are no longer being taught to write in cursive script, but at one school in Minnesota, the art of cursive is now a sport. Here's Derek James. Inside St. Anne's Academy in White Bear Lake. Every day we practice handwriting. Cursive never went away. Uh, there's nothing wrong with technology, of course, but uh, we can't lose the ability to express ourselves in a written language. And the students uh, do well with cursive. Sixth grader Mary Kiefer. I just like to write anything that comes into my head, really. And fifth grader Zeta Miller. I like to read and write. Are among the winners in the 2024 Zaner Blozer National Handwriting Contest, which sees around 80,000 students from kindergarten through sixth grade apply each year. All students write the following sentence. The quick round fox jumps over the lazy dog. It's chosen because it contains every letter of the alphabet. K is a tough one. I'm sure everybody's got a different letter. Yeah. <laughs> I know Z comes up yes. quite a bit. And X um, I've got a lot of practice with, so I don't have to worry about that one. <laughs> Capital T. Q, the lowercase Q. Mm -hmm. That's pretty hard because I go into a G sometimes. <laughs> Judges selected them as winners based on their letters shape, size, spacing, and slant. After getting some inspiration from Mary and Zeta. I'm a lefty. <laughs> Be patient with me. A test to see if time has wrecked my writing. Where could I use a little work, would you say? Well, it says jumps. That is not an M. <laughs> you got me. Did you see another mistake? Yes. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, sure. Oh, boy. It's getting worse. Yeah, the R is not great, is it? <laughs> I mean, yours flows both the same. Mine kind of got a little... That almost looks like the M Ready. that was missing from here. <laughs> Many people are impressed by the children after they graduate that the students can read and write in cursive. Mary and Zita find personal benefits in knowing this lost art form. I have many pen pals that I like to write to in different states, so I use my handwriting to write to them. I like to draw vines and cursive is kind of like drawing vines and it, um, writing in cursive helps me with my um, flourishes. In White Bear Lake with photojournalist Tony Peterson, Derek James, WCCO News. Derek James with the E, K, E, K, R, R, there we go. I can't spell either. Coming up ahead of the Boston Marathon, the cursive's not bad though. We remember one of the biggest supporters, once dubbed the official mascot of the race, his heroic story. After the break, he's a good boy. If you've watched the uplift from the very beginning, you may remember us introducing you to a golden retriever named Spencer that became known as the mascot of the Boston Marathon. Well, that special dog supported runners year after year, and now we are honoring him. Here's Anna Myler. For years, Spencer was a fixture along the Boston Marathon route, standing for hours in the sun or the rain, making thousands of runners smile as they passed by him, many even stopping to say hi. We had lines of people when Spencer was with us. I mean, lines of people. We're not talking like three or four people. There was like 20 people deep waiting to take a picture. They're stopping the marathon to take a picture with Spencer. And he loved every second of it. 
Spencer first started carrying a Boston Strong flag after the Boston Marathon bombings in 2013, offering love and encouragement. Spencer <laughs> totally understood what he was doing and it made, he knew he made a difference and he, and he enjoyed doing it. His unwavering support continued every year, even through the pandemic when there weren't any runners. And on social media, Spencer and his sister Penny held signs, reminding their many followers of the date when the days of lockdown all blended together. We, li we lived in a lot of spirits, you know, even, even when we weren't physically able to do it. And um, it, it did get a lot of people through some tough times. Spencer was going through a tough time himself in 2020 when he was diagnosed with a tumor. Like when he was suffering and, you know, I thought like, you know, I could lose him. Um, his job wasn't done. He, he was like, Dad, I'm not going anywhere. Spencer beat the odds and miraculously he was back out on the route the next year, bringing smiles to thousands of people. In 2022, he was named the official dog of the Boston Marathon in a ceremony at the Fairmont Copley Plaza. But Spencer was even more than that. He was a therapy dog, regularly visiting schools, hospitals, and nursing homes. And he became a symbol of hope to others battling cancer, including marathon runner Susan Hurley. I wanted to lift her spirits and I knew that Spencer's a therapy dog. She loves dogs. I contacted Rich and I said, you know, can we do a visit? So we went over, met Spencer and Penny and the kind of the connection and relationship grew from there. Sadly, Spencer passed away from cancer last year. His sister Penny following him a short eight days later. It's amazing how many people reached out after he had passed away. It was I've never seen anything like it. He just, how many people he affected. It was Susan and Trisha who immediately came up with the idea to pay tribute to Spencer with a statue. And they quickly raised the donations they needed from community members. There's no dog that uh, would stand out there like him. And uh, he just, he was just the epitome of what the Boston Marathon stands for. They approached local sculptor Jeff Bucaccio, who has built props for big movies in Hollywood but it's projects like this that mean the most to him. Projects like this are especially special for us here because um, we're able to affect our community. Jeff and his team spent months designing, molding, and perfecting Spencer's statue. He gave us the big reveal at his studio in Canton. There's a team of artists here that really, we all poured our heart into this. Um, because we knew what Spencer meant to so many people. What details did you really focus on when you were creating his Spencer? His eyes. His eyes. How come? Because they just pull you in. They pull you in. And that big, beautiful smile. We were honored to be the first to show Spencer's dad how the statue turned out. That's him. That's him. When it came time to find a spot for Spencer, the Ashland Select Board denied the request to put the statue on town property. So residents Robin and Cynthia Hicks offered up a piece of their own private land right across from where Spencer always stood. And what he gave to the, the community and the runners and, and the enthusiasm and just the positivity um, all those years. And just enjoy and reflect. Sit there and think about what this... Think of what, as a human being, you could do what this dog did. Rich's two pups, Jimmy and Jade, are now training to carry on Spencer's beloved tradition, right alongside his gentle spirit, forever part of the Boston Marathon. He was a symbol of hope, unconditional love, and something we should all strive for. He was more than we ever deserved, certainly more than I ever deserved. Coming up, a fair weather friend is there for you in good times, but how about a bad weather friend? We could all use one of those. That's how Lynn's story describes herself. We're going to meet her coming up.
Lynn Story personally calls herself a bad weather friend. Uh, what other people call her is a guardian angel. How did she earn these very different titles? Well, David Begno explains. When you see Lynn's story, what you don't see is her Texas-sized heart. This 64-year-old Fort Worth retiree had a lot of free time on her hands until she met April Goodwin. I had no transportation and I didn't know what to do. She found help on the community app next door after revealing to strangers that she had been diagnosed with uterine cancer. Someone spoke up and said, I'll, I'll take you to your appointments. And I kind of ignored it because it's a stranger. What do you do? So she messaged me again and said, I'll take you. I mean it, I'm honest, I, you know, I'm sincere. Morning. Hi, you look so pretty. Over the last year, Lynn has driven April to more than 25 radiation appointments, six chemotherapy treatments, and countless doctor's visits. Rain or shine, Lynn is always on time. One time, her car broke down and she goes and flags down somebody in the middle of traffic to get me into my chemo. <laughs> That's Lynn. Well, months after meeting April, Lynn again was on the next door app when she noticed a post from Kevin Horrigan, who is legally blind. Lynn's like a little angel. She really is. Because um, I can't drive. So I thought, well, I can drive there and take him to work and then go home. See you tomorrow. Hard times drove Kevin out of retirement. Bye. Now Lynn lessens his burdens. Lynn drives me to work or she picks me up from work. It helps tremendously. Five days a week at five in the morning, there's Lynn. Hi, Kevin. It's me. How was your night? I just started thinking of myself this way recently as a bad weather friend. You know, fair weather friends are only there when everything's good for you. But a bad weather friend is there to help you in times of need. Okay. They were strangers a year ago, and now friends. <laughs> Lynn loves people. She talks to everybody. <laughs> Your hair is so cute. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> everybody. The best way for me to feel good is to help other people feel good. Yes. Just to make it easier for them. Yes, I get that. Mm-hmm. That's the joy, isn't it? Yeah. That's the joy. Mm -hmm. What was the first thing that led to what has been the kindness that you've done? What does this go back to? I don't know. It's just always been important to me to be nice to people and to not hurt people's feelings. I didn't want to hurt her feelings. By asking about a 45-year-old mistake she made that showed up in a recent background check. You were arrested. I was. When you were in your 20s. I was. For shoplifting. I was. What did you learn from that? I learned to stop it, to be better. I went into therapy and kind of got a feel for why I felt the need to, for the high for shoplifting. And that helped. And then many years later, I was finally diagnosed as bipolar. And that helped because I got on medication to make me even. I remember you saying to me, the shoplifting may have been formative in shaping the woman that I was then going to grow up to be. Yes. I was ashamed of having behaved in such a manner that I needed to be arrested. And my mother was so kind to me. Mm. And she bailed me out of jail and she got me a lawyer and made it very clear that that was the only time this was going to happen. And so I determined to be better. Being honest about a mistake you made mm -hmm. 45 years ago mm -hmm. makes you so relatable to so, so many of us. Because mm -hmm. everybody makes mistakes. Of course. But not everybody goes out of their way to be as helpful as you. I wish they would. Everything would be so much better. Well, it's hard to do better than this. Lynn was 31 years old when she donated her healthy bone marrow to a critically ill patient she didn't even know. So it's no surprise when she recently was asked to foster a disabled three-legged dog named Sully, she said, sign me up. You like head rubs, don't you? 
What a story. She's my guardian angel because I didn't have any family to help me fight, but I had a new family to help me fight. Thank you for allowing me to get treatment for my cancer so I could be here today. You know, you're welcome. Thank you. Got a little chilly. It did get a little chilly. I feel that I'm more humble now having known them and being able to help them. Um, Why do you think that is? I don't know. But I get blushy and kind of embarrassed to talk about it and antsy. Do you think it's that it just softens your heart? Mm. And it, well, and it just feels like, how could I not do it? So I don't, in a way, I don't expect or understand the praise that I may get for it because it just seems so natural to do it. That is our show. I hope it brightened your day. I hope it lifted you up. I am fairly confident that it did. We're pretty good at it around here, but if for some reason it didn't, reruns are always free. We'll find some good news. Re-rack it.